you will not become grilled cheese from watching this video. You probably won't even become consistent at setting 1 million scores either. This isn't what that video is. This video is literally for if you've never gotten a 1 million and you simply want at least one. Now, before we get into that, I want to set some things up and explain 1 million scores in general. Why exactly do you want a 1 million score? Within Stable, there is no great distinction between 1 million points or lower. In Laser, 1 million points is required for an SS score, but that'll probably get adjusted down the line. Really, the main benefit you get from setting a 1 mil is that your leaderboard placement is fixed, so if it's a number 1 score, it'll stay number 1, and so on. It's also really nice to have a sense of completion on the map, knowing you got the maximum score possible. But other than that, if a map already has a max number 1 or top 8 or 50 placements, there really is no other value. Osu doesn't really keep track of 1 mil scores in any official visible way, and a lot a lot of third party trackers either might be missing a few scores or aren't always 100% accurate. Even with all of this being true, I can understand still wanting to achieve something you haven't already. The first thing you need to do is be capable of setting an SS score. Seriously. There's players out here with negative accuracy and no SS scores on their profile. You really need that general sense of rhythm and consistency before even thinking about going one step above that. And a lot of this comes down to playing the game for long enough to the point where you can hit all of the notes within a low margin of error without it being too much trouble. If you're struggling at this point, try playing longer and more challenging maps and to keep at it until you can consistently set an SS score on really low star maps. 1 billion score means that all of your hits were within the max 320 window. That's less than 60 milliseconds early or late. What makes getting 1 billion score so hard is the fact that any one of those hits could be just one millisecond too early or too late and it effectively invalidates the entire score. This is what makes Eternal scoring system so appealing. You can in theory get a miss and still obtain the highest grade possible if you were consistent enough given enough notes within the song. Going back to Osu, motions that involve individual finger movements on one hand with quick one-fourth rhythms adds to the difficulty of such accuracy. Long notes can also be tricky to maintain, though there seems to be a lot of leniency on score v1. This is why you see a lot of high accuracy scores being done on core jack or mostly one-half rhythm maps, as they're the most simple. Including the maps lent into this, the longer the map is, the more chances and points in time there are for you to make a mistake. Now that we have a general understanding of 1 million scores and what makes them so difficult, what are some ideal maps to get your first one on? Well, as I mentioned, length plays a huge role in this, especially if you're less experienced, so we'll be looking at maps below the 40 second mark. It might be tempting to try converted maps, as these are generally lower in star rating, but this might not always be a good idea. These have many long notes that are seemingly thrown in at random from a mania perspective, and having to time so many long note releases without adjacent notes can be tricky. There's also the problem with how little density these have. When there's a large gap between the notes, it can be hard to keep track of time without additional context. You can put DT on, which does help with the length and empty space component, but this sometimes introduces awkward and tricky one-handed finger movements that I talked about earlier. Plus, having to mentally keep track of a higher BPM song, even when the density is normal, can also be quite tricky. So if you do want to use DT, make sure the BPM stays within a comfortable range for you. We're trying to make this as easy as possible, so there's no point in encountering such obstacles in the first place. Lastly, I would avoid maps that have one-fourth rhythms completely, unless they are isolated to one section of the song, or divided up by the hands, or the BPM is low enough. This mostly depends on your own skill though, and how comfortable you are. I'll provide a brief list of maps you could try, and include the links in the description. Okay, this one only has three hard parts. The first one is this part right here, coming off the finger and then going on this one. Then there is this part right here. Having to jump on this, uh, like one fourth part. And then it repeats. And the ending kind of just cuts off, um. So yeah, that's like the only. You gotta memorize like three parts in that. Not, not too bad. This one's a little bit more dense, so don't play with double time. This is the only hard part, I think. It's like a weird walking pattern with these long notes. And this. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, that's like a one-fourth. So, really just like this main cluster right here, you gotta watch out for. And then everything else is like one-half rhythm. And yeah, this one's a classic. Pretty simple. Pretty short. For the easy difficulty, you can put double time. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty slow. For the normal, don't play with double time. There's a little bit of like one fourth rhythm here and there. But it's all like divided by the hands and it's still pretty slow. Let's see that again. Okay, not too bad. And then for the hard difficulty, it should be doable. Nothing too tricky. There's nothing out of the ordinary that stands out. There's some long notes here and there. It looks like all one half rhythm. Um, let's see. It's pretty simple. 
All right, this one's pretty simple. It has like one, one rhythm, but this long note part is a little bit tricky if you're not good with like holding down one finger and like pressing with the other. So double time is optional, but it should be pretty easy. The normal difficulty is probably easier because it's all just like one, one rhythm. Um, there's no long notes and I don't think there's any one fourth. So it's super simple. Yeah. Super simple. As mentioned in the previous section, a lot of times you end up just having to memorize certain sections of the map, just so you can be ready to hit something difficult, or if there's a rhythm change. The benefit of these maps being so short is that you can play them many times in a row, and really become familiar with the placement and rhythm of every single note. If there's a specific part of the map you don't really understand, you can repeatedly try the pattern in the editor to really nail it down, or simply just try one of the other maps. There's also the mirror mod if you ever have a complete mind block, but because these maps are so simple in structure, it really shouldn't come down to that. If you're struggling to stay within the 320 window, try playing through the map a couple times with Hard Rock. This will get used to playing with a smaller margin of error. It can get to the point where when you go back to no mod, you can feel the mistakes you would have made on Hard Rock, but you're still within the 16 milliseconds of no mod. And knowing when you're hitting too early or too late is probably a skill that you should develop when learning how to SS in general. But when it comes to 1 million scores, a trick you can do is play through the map entirely and pay attention to these numbers. Essentially, you want to take the difference of these numbers and apply it to your local map offset. So in this case, if it's negative 6.5 and then 11.4, I would set the map offset to positive 4 and retry. You don't want to overcorrect too much as I simply could have just been off timing, but since these are the averages of your hits, they should help you hit more accurately next time. I won't go into accenting or ghost tapping in this video as those are more advanced techniques and probably won't help in the specific case. Most people will say things like your hardware won't make you a better player, and that's true for the most part. However, once you start getting down to these millisecond timings and near-perfect play, having faulty or limited hardware can prevent you from performing to your best ability. Having a keyboard that's not 1000Hz or has chord splitting is definitely the main problem that membrane players might face. I mentioned this in a previous video, but essentially, if you have to hit a 2 note chord and your keyboard is locked at 125Hz, as well as having chord splitting, this can add up to 8 milliseconds of delay between the two keystrokes, I think. The 320 window is only 60 milliseconds, so cutting that in half will definitely have a noticeable effect on your ability. Rendering your game on unlimited FPS does give you the lowest delay possible, but this also can lead to micro stutters, depending on your system, and can drastically affect your ability to consistently hit all 320s. So much so that it's probably better to play on optimal. It'll be a lower FPS, sure, but it's a lot more consistent and you won't get those same lag spikes. 1.5 milliseconds isn't that bad, plus grilled cheese plays on VSync. So if you can get so many 1 millions, then you can probably get used to whatever your system is capable of outputting. That's all the information I wanted to share in this video. Honestly, it comes down to just retry spamming the map over and over as much as you're mentally able to until you finally get super lucky. Make sure you check the description and try out the maps I've provided, or you can look for other similar maps that seem doable for you. Try not to stress so much if you can't get the 1 million right away. You can always come back to the map days later, and you might even be more skilled at that point. 